everyone welcome to the channel so in this video i'm gonna show you how to load and ban composite a landsat imagery in arc map so now let's get started so now let's get started so now we're gonna load our landsat 8 imagery into arc map and combine it into a single raster and then i'm uh, going to show you how to set the display correctly so you can view the raster in arc map once uh, you have the multi band imagery raster and then i will also show you a new format of the viewing imagery that uh, maybe you are not too used to it if uh, you've never seen an infrared imagery before called the false color infrared image which is the first of many ways that you can uh, view the non visible light by yourself it is a kind of a cool concept to think about uh, that we can actually see the things with gis with uh, remotely sensed uh, imagery that uh, we can't actually uh, see with our own eyes and uh, i will get you to how uh, we do that just in the moment so let me show you my Landsat 8 data. So this is my Landsat 8 data I have downloaded from USGS, the official website where you can able to download your Landsat 8 data. So the link will be given in the description to how to download a Landsat 8 data from USGS Earth Explorer. So this is my Landsat 8 data. Now let me extract this data here. So for that, I'm gonna right click and uh, we're gonna click this option called extract here. So once you did that, it's gonna extract all the files from the Zip format, zip format of this uh, Landsat 8 data. So now we have extracted our uh, Landsat 8 data. So now let me uh, go back to Arc Map. So now we're gonna add our Landsat 8 data into our Arc Map. And now let me navigate to this uh, option called Add Data. I'm gonna click this Add Data. And now I have navigated to the folder location where I have saved my Landsat 8 data. So once you have navigated to your folder location, and uh, I'm going to select all these images uh, here from B1 to uh, B11. So I'm going to select all the bands from band 1 to band 11. Let me select that. I'm going to select all this button, all these bands here. So I'm going to unselect this particular bands uh, data here. So I have selected band 1 to band 11. So once you did that, we're going to click this option called add data. So now it's going to add our uh, Landsat 8 data into arc map. So it's building the pyramid for each image right now. You can able to see here. Okay, uh, we have uh, loaded our Landsat 8 data here. So let's take a look at uh, just one of these bands here. So I'm going to hold the control and uh, click one of them uh, to turn them all off. So now I'm going to turn on the band 2 here this is band 2 so band 2 of uh, landsat is a uh, blue light so let me explain this uh, if a uh, sensor is sensing a blue light but uh, there is a uh, one sensor that uh, specifically sends blue light it uh, just records a value between 0 uh, to 40,336 366 here in this case for uh, how intense the blue light uh, it's getting in each pixel is uh, width so here the bright spots are being very blue and the dark spots are being not very blue here so you can able to see the difference between here so one thing is that confusing uh, at first uh, when uh, looking at this is the both of these are lakes so this is the lake that is mostly dry here and this is the normal uh, lake here and uh, one thing uh, that's is pretty confusing is uh, why is the lake uh, super blue and uh, this lake is not very blue so this particular lake is uh, super blue and uh, this particular lake is not uh, very blue well a uh, deep water uh, doesn't really reflect the whole of uh, anything well the deep water uh, just absorbs the light and uh, and so the shallow lake uh, will reflects the a kind of a blue that's what we are see as uh, a blue but uh, but the deep uh, lake is uh, just a pretty dark here so this is a deep lake and this is a shallow lake so just to help uh, clear up any confusions the reflectance between that uh, between these two lakes so now i'm going to create a multi band raster out of these uh, bands here, uh, out of these bands here so now navigate to the search section here so once you click that a new window pops up saying search here and here i'm going to enter the name called uh, composite band so now i'm going to click this search button here so now click this uh, tool called composite bands data management so this is our tool, the composite bands. 
So this particular tool uh, takes a bunch of uh, input raster of these uh, bands here and make make them uh, into a single raster data set set from uh, these uh, multi uh, from these uh, multiple separate band files here so now i'm going to insert my uh, input raster here so i'm going to select my bands in order i'm going to select the first band will be band 1 so now we have inserted band 1 and followed by we're going to insert band 2 and next band 3 make sure that you arrange your bands in order band 4 and followed by we're going to select band 5 band 6 so now I have uh, ar arranged my bands in orderly manner starting from band 1 to band 11 so it is arranged in orderly manner so we are arra arranging this bands in orderly manner because it's just going to uh, name them as a band 1 band 2 band 3 in a composite uh, raster data set so uh, I need to make make sure right now that uh, the order of the bands uh, name that's going to give them so that I can actually look up uh, what the band numbers uh, mean compared to the Landsat uh, reference and now uh, navigate to the folder location where you would like to save this file here let me navigate to the folder location so now I have navigated to the folder location I have entered as uh, composite raster l8.tiff so I'm gonna save this Now we're going to click OK and it's going to start working uh, to turn uh, all of these bands into a one uh, single raster data set that's an 11 band raster data set and now uh, one thing I uh, did here that might be a kind of problem is uh, I put in a band 8 uh, which has a different resolution than the rest of the bands and so the issue might be that uh, it's probably going to need uh, need to resample that band uh, 2 match the rest of uh, rest of that uh, mean uh, we can't get uh, it as a raster data set uh, that has uh, a multiple different resolution of the raster uh, they are all going to be the same so it should be resampling uh, that to match the rest of them and uh, what you really uh, want to do uh, is to make sure that uh, that uh, bands that uh, you're putting in are of uh, all of the same resolution right up the front and uh, we will confirm uh, when we finish uh, compositing our data set uh, that uh, we actually got the resolution uh, we are looking for which is uh, 30 meter to match the rest of these okay so uh, I just finished uh, compositing everything and uh, we get this view that is uh, not particularly familiar still the things look uh, a little like the color is wrong uh, everywhere to me and uh, we can uh, go take a look at uh, maybe what's going on here so we're gonna right click on this uh, layer here and uh, click this option called properties and in that we're gonna navigate to this option called symbology so under symbology it is assigning a band to uh, each color value here for me and uh, it assigns uh, band 1 to uh, red here and band uh, 2 to green and uh, band 3 to blue well in fact uh, in Landsat the band 4 is, uh, is red band 3 is green and uh, band 2 is blue and so it's uh, displaying the different colors of light to me at, at the wrong way so it's showing me aerosol band as a red and uh, showing the blue light as a green so we're going to fix that let's uh, change it to the change it to show us the light that we expect so uh, in the multi band raster the red is uh, band 4 and uh, green is uh, band 3 and uh, blue is band 2 so let me click OK and now uh, I get much more of, of the kind of uh, satellite imagery I'm looking for and uh, still uh, this is how uh, we see the unseeable in uh, GIS is I can change uh, which color I'm displaying so uh, I can uh, all of the sudden say and show me as a red light uh, some of uh, other things so let's uh, take a look uh, maybe one of the thermal bands I'm gonna navigate to this layer right click and click properties and in symbology so let's have uh, everything be red uh, where it's thermal so now I'm gonna click this uh, option here I'm gonna select band 10 which is uh, one of the thermal band and I'm gonna click OK so the redder things are the warmer in this uh, image and so uh, we are displaying the thermal data as red but we are also uh, still seeing uh, green and uh, blue in uh, kind of uh, their normal way now uh, let's uh, take a look at something that's a little more common especially for so again go to this option especially for uh, vegetation uh, mapping 
So the near infrared light is uh, very useful for the vegetation because the vegetation reflects uh, a lot of uh, near infrared light. So we're going to select for red, we're going to select the near infrared band here. So the near infrared band is band 5. And uh, what we can make here is a false color uh, infrared image where uh, we view in band 5 uh, we view the infrared as a red light. So the near infrared light shows up as a red in our screen and uh, and then we shift everything by 1. So uh, now uh, we're going to view red as a green uh, on our screen here gonna select band uh, 4 here and uh, then uh, we view the green as blue so we're gonna select uh, band 2 so this is a little disorienting the first time you see it uh, but uh, you get uh, used to it so now I'm gonna click OK so uh, everywhere I am seeing red I am seeing uh, in a lot of cases uh, this probably means it's uh, vegetation because the vegetation just reflects the near infrared for uh, red so well uh, so what's uh, cool about it uh, it is the healthy vegetation that reflects the uh, infrared and uh, so uh, if it's a kind of slight red it might be a less healthy vegetation or it could be something else uh, entirely and uh, then wherever it's kind of, it's a kind of uh, greenish uh, that's uh, actually where we are seeing uh, red and wherever we see kind of bluish it's actually where something is kind of green so now we can uh, zoom into our image here and uh, we can actually see a uh, clear cuts on the forest here and uh, and uh, we can see the red pixels around them uh, and uh, the different uh, reflectance value here so uh, we have this uh, Landsat scene uh, with all bands but maybe uh, I want to uh, just add uh, one band uh, to my map uh, map document so for that we can navigate to my add section here so navigate to the folder location so this is our composite raster Landsat 8 Optif. so you can able to see here uh, this is my Landsat image here a Landsat scene with all the bands so now uh, if I click uh, once on my uh, and click add uh, it adds all the bands to my map scene here and if I uh, want to add a single band, uh, I just double click on this band here. Like when I can actually uh, go in and add just individual bands here. You can able to see band 1 to band 11 that is available in this uh, layer here. So maybe uh, right now I actually just want uh, band uh, 2, 3 and uh, band 4 here. So now we're going to select uh, band 2, 3 and band 4. So I'm going to add this uh, band 4, 3 and 2 as a separate layer if I didn't already have the the tip for for creating a combined image uh, I might uh, select uh, those three and uh, add them so I'm gonna click add so so all of a sudden uh, I have this red green and uh, blue layer as just separate images in my my uh, map document that I can uh, use for processing and uh, something like a raster calculator so once I can uh, bind them uh, into a multi multi-band raster I don't always have to work with uh, all of these bands uh, in our map I can uh, bring them uh, in as a separate layer still and uh, make uh, and mix for a good way to store them uh, this way. I can uh, put them as a one data set but I can also access them as the individual layers that I can uh, use for analysis. So in this video I have shown, uh, shown you how to uh, bring the Landsat data into uh, ArcMap and uh, how to combine uh, it into a single multiband raster and uh, then uh, how to view it and uh, make sure that you're actually viewing the visible light or the portions of the electromagnetic spectrum that you can't see as a, a visual a visible light that uh, you can see we can make a false color infrared image out of a near infrared red and uh, green light so thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe to our channel and give us a like